Uh, hi everyone, uh, welcome for this beginning of the afternoon. I might introduce myself a little bit before, as you have my guest with my accent and with my name. So I'm Emmanuel Lain, tout le monde. I'm French. Uh, for my legitimacy, I've been working in data science slash ML engineering slash MLOps for the last about 10 years. And I did wrote a book, it's in French. So if you want to learn French, you might want to read it. Otherwise, don't try it. <laughs> Uh, about uh, about MLOps and about a lot of stuff. And I want to talk about one thing in particular which I, uh, I talk about in this book. It is uh, CICD uh, for machine learning. And my intention is to take a, a bit of a step back of what we might do in, your, in our project and to see how we could do it maybe differently or the patterns that we are using. Okay, so first of all, maybe uh, who knows what is CICD? Raise your hand. Okay, most of you. Great. So, just a reminder, CI-CD is continuous integration, continuous deployment. Continuous integration is the fact of taking the code, making some validation. So in Python, it would be a running test, running Flakate, running Bandit, and stuff like that. Then we build it. We make an artifact about it, like a zip or something like that. An artifact is a zip, a Docker file, with a timestamp, the version, and stuff like that. This is a weird stuff, by the way, in Python, is that we do the build after the test. In Java, you build and then you test. So for most software developers, it's a bit weird what we do. And then we have the continuous deployment, which is taking this artifact and putting it in production. Okay? So what it could look like, it's mainly YAML's file, so it could look like this one. Uh, it is a small one because the screen is not that big, but uh, the first line, I give a name. The second line, I say, every time I push, you do that. Then I say, you run on Ubuntu. Then I say, you check out all the code. Then I choose the Python version, uh, 3.10. Then I install my dependencies and I run my test. Most of the time, I do much, much more stuff. Okay, But it was an illustration of what it would look like. This is GitHub Actions, but you have also GitLab CI, uh, Jenkins, and stuff like that, I guess. Why do we use uh, CICD and why do we like it? Um, it's not an exhaustive list, but it's why I like it. First of all, it's automation, meaning that uh, going to production is automated. I don't have to worry about it. It will work. And it offers reproductibility. If I rerun the same script, it will normally give the same results. <laughs> I can roll back. If I deploy something that was bad, I want to be able to roll back and uh, provide uh, the previous version to fix it. So I can trust my system and I can make some changes, even on Friday evening or Sunday evening. So this leads to faster delivery. Okay, so this is about like software engineering. This is about code. In machine learning, it's a bit different because of course we do code and we package it and we deploy it, but we have this other stuff which is called the model. You know, model, you train it on some data to do some stuff and then you deploy it and you make some inferences. So training it is like building an artifact and you have to register it somewhere and then you have to deploy it into your production environment, right? So one second, uh, two artifacts and not just one. And there is a, another specialty is that we have a new event that might justify the deployment of an artifact. In software development, like you change the code, you deploy the code, okay? In machine learning, well, you might not change the code, but retrain your model on new data, on other data, and you still have to deploy it, okay? So two triggers and two artifacts to handle. How you can get a machine learning model? Well, the easy technique, I would say, is to use a prediction API. You might have done it playing with um, OpenAI, for example. You make some request against OpenAI uh, API, and you get some prediction, and it's nice. You can download an existing model from a gig face and then run it on your, you know, on, a, on your infrastructure. Or you can train it and function it. For the first one, for the API version, well, it's like software without machine learning. I guess it's another service, you just make API calls and I guess there is no new stuff. For a gig face, if you want to deal with the model, only download it and run it. Well, it's like using a library. I guess you have Panda uh, dot, uh, 2.0.0, .0, you want to switch to Panda 2.2. .2. Well, you just change the version and deploy it. It would be the same thing for the model. You download it, you change the version, okay, you re-download it, and you put it in production. 
So the main focus of my talk is around building your own model and what you have to do to deploy it and to run it. Okay. So in this talk, I'm going to ask myself three questions. Where should I train the model? Where should I store my model versions? And how to load the desired version, or when should I load the desired version? Okay. And I'm going to go through three examples that I guess you might have lived is if you do some machine learning. My first example is making a prototype or a demonstrator. Okay. So I want to show maybe the marketing team that um, machine learning could help them. Okay. And I want to do a use case. I want to maybe predict if they will, if a client has some appeal for a product, would want to buy a product. But I'm building a demonstrator, so my challenge is to go fast. I don't want to spend too much time. And I want to be frugal. I don't want to, I need a lot of resources, a lot of code and stuff like that. So I want to do a small stuff to convince them that it's useful. So my proposition is, in this case is to be very light weighted for the build and the deployment. So here is my proposition. What you could do is to, on the left side, you have your train and inference uh, code. You put it in your CI CD. It builds a single artifact. You put it in your deployment. It goes to production and in, in a single service. And in this single service, you could train your model at the start of the service, have the model, and make an inference. Okay. So my goal here is to be very lightweighted. So I build a single service, train, model, inference, and I'm done. Okay. Quite light. Quite lightweighted. How do I store the version? Well, I don't, and in fact, I don't care because it's just a prototype. I don't need to roll back. I don't need to maintain a previous version. I don't need to have some audit trace and stuff like that. So I don't store it. Easier. I don't have a model registry. And how should I load a new version? Well, it's done in the inference. So for example, here is my Python code for the, an API that would do some predict. So on line three, I uh, initiate my model, seek cloud style. I get my training data on line four. On line five, I uh, fit my model. On line six, I make a prediction and I return it. It works well for a prototype. It might be slow because the training might be a bit slow, but it's a prototype, so maybe it's enough. Okay. So my workflow to develop this prototype is quite easy, right? On the left side, there is me. I make a git add, git push of my code. There is my CI CD taking it on the arrow number two to production. And then it requires data, returns data, train my model, try and make prediction, and show the prediction to the user. It's an easy workflow. I don't have many tools, and I have an easy workflow. It's enough for my prototype. Nice. Now the marketing team loved it, and they want a product about it. They want to be able to have pr uh, prediction regularly, and they want stuff like that. So I'm starting to develop a product, and it's new problems, right? I will need to have a bit more reliable. Re, um, I will need to be more robust and stuff like that. So I want to develop a product in an iterative way because I kind of believe about HR and stuff like that. My use case is I want to serve my first models to my users, and my challenges are to measure uh, the product value. Is it useful to my user? Really useful, not just wow. And uh, I want to be able to pivot quickly because I will get some user feedback. Hey, you should do that this way. Okay, I need to change everything. Okay, so I need to change quickly. So my three questions. The first one was, uh, how should I build or train my model? Well, my proposition, since I need to iterate a lot, is to do it on my developer environment on the upper side, right, uh, right here. So I get my, I write my transcript or my notebook, by the way. I get my data. I produce a model, and on the other end, I have my inference script, and I put it in the CI CD, I build an artifact, and I deploy everything to production. Okay? Well, I'm saying developer environment, meaning that uh, maybe it's my laptop, but if it's confidential data, maybe you need to put it on a like, secure environment, maybe a Databricks or stuff, I, I don't know what you could have. Okay? So, I have my model. Where should I store it now? Well, my proposition, if you don't do deep learning, is git edit. You make a folder slash models, git add, git commit, git push, and your models go with the code, and it's easy to deploy because you already have your deployment script. Yeah? So it works the same way. It works if the model is not too big, of course. If you, the, your model is a random forest, a or stuff like that, yeah, it's okay, it's a few megabytes, kilobytes, 
it will go in uh, in Git. If it's a deep learning model of a few gigabytes, it won't work. It will break it. Okay. This is nice because I can iterate easily. I change the model, I git add, git push, and it goes with the CI CD. And finally, when do I load the desired version of my model? Well, during deployment, when I build the artifact, right? So this is a Docker file. In my Docker file, on first line, I say, I take a Python uh, image, I copy the source code, I copy the model on line three, like copy model.joblib. I set my working directory, I install my requirements, and I run my maybe Streamlit app or anything, okay? This is quite nice because I have a few tools and I'm using the software tools that already exist in my company, right? My workflow, it's a bit more complicated. So on the upper side, I launch my model training, right? So my environment will get the data, then I will log the models, the parameters and everything on my uh, computer. Then I could git add everything, git push, it all on uh, on Git, and then on our server seven, it deploys the inference service. It make a and if a user make a request, then I can make my prediction, log everything on my data source, and provide my inference. It's a bit more complicated, but it answers my needs, and I can iterate quickly. Thanks. It worked. Great. Now they want me to scale. I need to make more product. I need to compare some model, you know, do some IB testing and stuff like that. So I want to scale. I'm serving a lot of users now. I have thousands of users because it's a great product. Millions of users. I want to test and update quickly the models. I want to do some IB testing. My challenge is what they ask me is that I have a robust production. I should not fail. I should not deploy some dirty stuff. I should be able to act on Drift. You know Drift is like uh, you have some data and it, it changes a bit over time. For example, if you were on Facebook in 2010, I guess you were 20, now you are 50 if you are on Facebook. So it's not the same person, it's not the same behaviors, so the models to predict what to show to users should not be the same, right? And Drift can be a bit faster than that, for example, with COVID. So I need to act on Drift. And I need to keep deploying on demand, meaning I have a new feature, I have a new killer feature, a new killer model, I need to deploy it quite easily. So my proposition is this. This time, let's make a robust thing, let's make a production service for training. I only do it now because I will need some like infrastructure, I will need a, a machine to run my training uh, service and stuff like that. So from the left to right, I have my train code, my inference code, I build some artifacts, I deploy them to production into two services. On the top, I have my training, my training uh, service that would produce a model, and I need to pass my model to my inference artifact, uh, my inference service that runs on my inference artifact, and I will be able to serve inferences. Okay. This is maybe state of the art. I guess like if you have a look at documentation from any cloud provider, they would suggest something about like it. And that's part of the point of my presentation is that they suggest this. They don't suggest the previous one that would make you a bit more quick to make some prototypes and stuff like that. Okay, but right now I'm scaling, so nice. I have a huge uh, thing. Where do I store my model version? Well, my proposition is to use S3 or Blob or any storage that exists, a simple storage. Uh, this is Python code uh, to show you that on the first line I drop the, I dump the model as a pickle, I don't know why. Uh, then I take the model and uh, upload it on a Blob from Azure, what you could do with anything else. I like it because it's lightweighted and like storage is something that exists and is cheap on every cloud provider. What I need here is to have my model, some metadata, a timestamp, and that's about it. There are some alternatives, of course. You could use a registry, uh, like a code artifact for artifactory, like frog artifactory is one, but it would be a bit weird in your workflow, meaning that like, you would have the CI CD that take an artifact from the artifactory, put it in production, production service would create an artifact, that put it in the artifactory. Yeah, it's weird. Or you could use a specialized model registry, such as MLflow. I don't like that much in flow in production. Because, well, you have to deal with a lot of stuff with that. You will have to deal with authentication, authorization, you will have to manage the service and stuff like that. 
and I only needed to save my model and a few metadata. So I find it a bit expensive for what I need. So my point is, it requires a little bit more pros than just I need to save a model. If you already have it in your organization, if you are using Databricks that encapsulate email flow natural, uh, by design, okay, use it. If you don't have that, uh, I guess just a S3 will be enough. Okay? And then, when do I change my model version? Well, I have my service and I need to provide this service and offer it every time, every second or something like that. Depends on your needs, of course. So my proposition is to load it, to have the latest model maybe, on, uh, at each prediction. So what I do here is that I have my predict route, I have something that loads my model in my model envelope, and then I check on line 9 if there is a new model, if the model changed. If it changed, I load it. If it didn't change, I don't load it. I return my cache. This is quite nice. It's quite efficient. Other way would be to load the model at every inferences. It might be a bit slow, but could work. Or to load it at the start of the service. But this one is a bit more painful because if your model changes because of your data, you need to restart the service every time you change the model. If your model changes only because of the code, it's okay because well, you will deploy it and the service will restart. My workflow, well, a bit more complicated. So once again, I'm coding on the left. I add my code. Uh, on the upper side is the training service. On the lower side, it's the inference service. So it deployed to the train service. I get some data. I require data and get some data. I log my model. I log my metadata, my metrics, and stuff like that, maybe with MLflow. I add my code for my inference service. I deploy it to the inference service, and then on the right side, uh, I have a request for the model, I provide the model, someone asks for an inference, I log everything, and I provide my inference. Okay, so this workflow is way more complicated. When it's necessary, when you are scaling, when you have millions of users, and it could be worth it. When you are starting with a small prototype, I don't think it's worth it. So, maybe... I talk really quickly, cool. we could have some questions. Uh, maybe to summarize a little bit what I try to show you. So where should I train my model? Well, I could do it in the inference service, when I'm building a prototype, or when I'm doing some online learning. You know, you train your model every time you make a prediction, like reinforcement learning and stuff like that, except that you would have inference then train. You could do it in your data science environment, your laptop, your data bricks, your Jupyter notebook or anything, if training is not too frequent. And I did it in my, one of my projects, we had to train the model, to retrain the model once every year. So we didn't automate anything, we just, like every year, okay, I take the code, I look how it works, okay, make, 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 done. I did that capuch. Or I could do it in a dedicated production service when training is triggered frequently and mainly by data changes. If I have to train my model because my data changed. Where should I store my model version? Well, my first proposition, uh, the minimalist one, would be Git. When you perform your model on local, in your dev environment, you could git at it, git push it. Of course, if it's small, if it's big, don't do it. The best recommendation would be to use some storage, such as a blob, a S3. Uh, when train is made by a dedicated service, so you have a dedicated service, it writes on S3, and the inference service read on uh, this S3. On the same registry as software, I'm not quite a fan of this one, but it could work if the training has been done by the CI. And on a specialized re registry, if you have it, if you already have MLflow, use it. Otherwise, you might need some more justifications, some more needs. And when should I load my new version? Well, during deployment, when the train is performed in dev or in my CI. At the service start, if the model changes only when the code changes. If the code change and the, if the model changes only when the code changes, then it's okay at service start every time you restart your service. During inference, if the when the train is triggered by data change and you have not too frequent uh, change in the models. And during inference, if model is updated, well, when you have frequent changes and you don't want to, uh, to, to break everything. Okay, so a few takeaways, and maybe we could have some questions then. CICD is a bit more complex in machine learning because you have a new artifact and you have new reasons uh, for change. You have a new source of change, which is data. 
there is no single good way to perform CICD in an ML context. You have to choose your pattern depending on your context on what you are doing, and maybe you could document it in an architecture decision record, you know, this thing that architects does. You log, I had this ID, this ID, this ID, here are the pros and the cons. <coughs> Software tools are not enough to deploy ML, but sometimes they can be, at least temporarily, at the beginning of your project. You could use the Git at the beginning of your project. I need to push my first model to production. Yeah, that's it. And maybe, well, often your product will look like all the free examples that I had. You will start with a prototype, you will build a product, you will scale later on. And so you will maybe have to change your CI CD through the project and not just start with the huge one and spend two weeks on it. Start with a small one and then iterate and make it change. Well, thank you very much. Presenting, and it's time for some questions. So, is there any simple way to CICD and ML model to integrate a circuit to run the inference? To integrate a circuit? Uh, integrate, to integrate circuits. Circuit. Is this question? <laughs> integrate a circuit, such as Edge. I don't know who asked the question. Edge. Oh, on Edge? Yeah. Oh, this is a tough one Edge uh, deployment. Uh, <laughs> Well, the question is, does your edge have uh, internet connection and stuff like that? Uh, I did work in some contexts where I didn't have internet connection, so you need to plug a USB key or something and deploy it manually. It's not automated, but at least you can automate uh, the deployment. If you have internet connection, it also works. Um, another question from Daniel. Hi, I'm Emmanuel. Uh, you showed us some alternatives on how to store and version code, code and models plus artifacts. How would you go about versioning the data that was used to train a model in order to ensure some sort of reproducibility? Where would it fit on your CI/CD pipeline? Okay. So the question is about where should I version the data? It's a good one. So there was some tools. There was DVC at some point. Uh, I don't know if. Many people still use it, maybe. Um, it was quite a nice idea. Uh, the idea was to have a version of every data set that you build and you save it on some S3 or some stuff like that and you keep a um, hash version of the data set to see if it changed. It was a nice view, but the problem was it's really heavy. Maybe your data will get quickly very heavy and every time you need to uh, get the data or push the data, it's quite slow and it's uh, a bit painful. It could work with small data set. So the alternative that I like is to perform it as code, meaning that I want to make some um, select request on my data uh, as code on my production database. For example, I will take every user's form uh, that bought something in year 2023. There is one huge condition to do that, is that the data don't change over time. So, Right now, we are in 2024, so users that bought something in 2023 shouldn't change. So it looks like, okay, if you do the same thing in 2024, of course the data set will change and it's not reproducible. Okay, you get the idea? There is one more trick, which is GDPR. If uh, some user asks to remove the data, well, it will change your data set and break it. So I don't really recommend to version uh, the data set as it all. In general, maybe there are some contexts where it's needed. I would more recommend to have a request, a code that makes it reproducible. 